Hey everyone, uh, my name is Akshay. Tonight I'll be uh, talking about inferring human features using deep networks. Um, so before we start, here are some of my uh, uh, credentials. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on, on, on Twitter. My handle is Akshay 3 uh, My personal website is akshapadot.com. And if you have any suggestions for me, feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any of your questions. So without further ado, we'll just start with the session. So it's more of a discussion, I'll say. Uh, we'll cover some of the basic aspects um, and then we'll deep dive. Uh, but this is more of an introductory session on computer division with machine learning. All right, so before we go ahead, I just wanted to thank ISODS for, uh, having, uh, for having me part of the session. Uh, I presented my work last year as well. Uh, at that, that time, I talked about um, resource utilization as a metric for machine learning. Uh, today, I'll be talking mostly about, about computer vision and machine learning. Um, and of course, at the same time, I'm happy uh, and open to any of your suggestions. All right. So a bit about myself. My name is Akshay Bahadur. I'm an Intel software innovator. I'm also a Google developer expert for machine learning. Um, and all of these, uh, 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 these modules or these programs are open for um open source contributors so any of you if, if you want to be a part of it i think it's it's really um i think it's really enlightening you get to meet a lot of uh, like-minded people so without further ado let's just quickly jump uh, but before that here's an important link so if you want to follow along uh, for the session if you want to uh, reach out to me uh, regarding any issues of the session you can reach out to this link so just go to pit.ly slash isods hyphen 20 um, and uh, you will be redirected to my GitHub page. Uh, this GitHub page will contain all the links and references for this particular session. Uh, so feel free to do that. And also at the same time, if you have any issues, you can open uh, an issue or a bug on that same GitHub page with me and I'll get back to you with, uh, with the issues. All right, so we'll first start with some of the basic understanding. So what I wanted to talk about is having a basic intuition is going to be very helpful uh, whenever you're working with machine learning. And let's look at these uh, these basic intuitions. Okay, so uh, as uh, you know, because when we start, we're gonna start slow in machine learning. So this is one of the, one of the most uh, basic data sets ever. This is a problem uh, called as MNIST, which is uh, essentially, essentially digit classification. So given the image of a digit, you want to categorize which digit does it belong to. So for example, as you can see in this image, the image is three, and at the same time, your uh, label is also three. So you want to just categorize different alphabets, different letters, in, uh, sorry, different digits into the classes. So let's, let's see, if, if we do some more of an exploratory data analysis, we see that the number of uh, pixel sizes by length and height are 28 by 28. We can also see that this is a black and white image. All right. Uh, and if we print out the pixel values of all of these uh, of, of the entire image, we'll see something like this. So the lower uh, the lowermost value is zero, which is the lowest intensity of a pixel, and the uppermost is is 255, which is the highest highest intensity of a pixel. So pretty much straightforward till now. Um, but as you can also see that the data is pretty scattered. So we have the lower value of zero and the upper one of 255. And you can see that in between our data is, is quite scattered. All right. So uh, now we'll talk about one of the very basic intuitions that is not even essentially machine learning. It comes from statistics or mathematics. Essentially, it's called as uh, normalization. So basically, you scale down your features to uh, to, a certain, to a specific range. And we can do that in machine learning. And it is, it is really, really beneficial. Let's look at that in, in, this, in this slides. All right, so what I do is I divide the whole data set by 255, okay? And 255, if you remember from the previous slide, is the maximum intensity of a pixel, okay? Uh, and now when we print out the data, we can see that the lower value is of course zero, but the upper bound is now one. So our data is much more constricted and, it, and the range is between zero and one. And this is a very basic concept of, very basic concept of statistics which we might have studied back in our, our school or college. And now we are applying that uh, to this problem. And let's look at how exactly this affects the whole problem. All right, so I do some of uh, uh, some basic, uh, you know, exploration of how many examples are there, how many text examples are there, and the shape and all these basic functionalities. 
and this is the model that I have used. So if I want to check out the model, here's a model. Uh, we use a fully connected layer, um, a simple feed power network, and then finally uh, we are densing it to uh, using softmax to 10 uh, output variables, which are just the digits from 0 to 9. Uh, and I'm just calling the same function uh, of model.fit and I'm uh, running it for two epochs back size of 64. And if you see, um, the accuracy is around 26% after two epochs and the loss is 11, which is okay. If, I mean, if we train it further for like five or four more epochs, it's going to be much, much better. Uh, and this is the no unnormalized data set. Okay. So now when we talk about normalized data set, we are using the same configurations again, the same model. Everything is the same. The only thing that we have changed is that now we have used the uh, normalized data set. And now if you look at the, our, our uh, values, we can see the loss is actually got down to 0.24 and the accuracy is 93%. So we have increased our accuracy by, uh, by 400% by just a simple mathematical technique that we have studied back in class 12th or even in college. And how that intuition helped us develop a uh, deep dive into machine learning is, is, is going to be one of the crux uh, concepts that I want you guys to take out of the session. All right, again, so we can just print out the graphs. Uh, as you can see that the accuracy is actually decreasing in a normalized data set. Uh, whereas in the, in, in the normalized data set, you can see that the accuracy is, is increasing, which means that our model is learning. So it's it's always a good um, you know it's, a, it's it's always a good practice to get back to your basics, understand uh, you know how exactly can you improve the performance by using very very basic functionalities. All right, so now we'll start. Uh, now uh, this was one of the basic intuition that I wanted to discuss uh, with you, and of course there are a lot of other things that you could do, but just wanted to uh, give you an understanding of uh, of how. So any, any complex concepts like machine learning can use some of these very basic concepts from mathematics and statistics, and that's going to help us eventually uh, make, the, make the whole machine learning model more efficient and more uh, relevant to our use case. Now we'll talk about feeding content through webcam. So essentially, in this case, uh, we'll be talking about uh, how can we show uh, different uh, objects to the webcam and make it recognize uh, based on our use case. So we'll see, let's look at that. We'll not go uh, into very deep uh, for computer vision because that is be slightly beyond the scope of the session. Uh, but I would try to give you a basic intuition of what exactly I'm trying to do when we talk about machine learning with computer vision. So in this in this particular sort of slides, I'll be using OpenCV. So if you guys are not familiar with OpenCV, OpenCV is an open source uh, framework for performing image processing on, on Python or, or C++. It's, it's pretty popular, so it has a good documentation. So if anybody would want to get into image processing, I would definitely recommend checking out this uh, open source project uh, called OpenCV. All right, so uh, some of the very basic functionalities. Uh, in the first line is just cam.read, which is basically a reading from the webcam. So very basic, you will get the image, get the frames. So a video is nothing but a sequence of frames per second. So you'll get these frames, you have to capture that. And then in the second line, I have called a function uh, get image contour thresh. So we'll discuss about that, but just for the sake of understanding, just uh, we can just assume that this function returns us the important areas that you want to talk about, okay? And once we have that, we get the contours. So contours are basically our, um, the points which are important to us. Okay, so let's say if, if, if I'm talking about, I want to get all the, uh, uh, let's say, I want to get all the blue colored images, uh, blue colored objects from the image, all the blue colored objects will be contours of, uh, for me, because these are my ob areas of interest. All right, so, and if after that, I'll just check if the length of contours is greater than zero, which means that I'm getting some uh, area of interest and then I get the maximum area of, of, of all the contours. Basically, this eliminates uh, some background noise. Maybe let's say if I have two, two blue colored objects, one is kept very far, one is kept near, I want to concentrate on the near object, then this uh, gets the area of the contour. And if the area is beyond a certain boundary, then it, we can safely say that it is the uh, area of interest. Okay. And then finally, what I do is that I do this basic functionalities of reshaping my uh, of, of the image into uh, 
into my uh, you know specific size uh, which i can then use uh, which i can then send to my model for predictions pretty basic functionality we are going to use this uh, this template throughout the entire uh, throughout the entire uh, slides that are left we will just talking about getting the contours getting the areas of interest uh, and then once you have that we get the maximum area and then we send it to predictions so this is just a very basic workflow of of uh, of how i use open cv uh, with machine learning now important thing is that let's talk about the the function get image contour thresh function because that is very important all right so what happens is that um, so this is the function what i do is that i convert the color image to grayscale image uh, what it does is that it removes the unnecessary channels so let's say if i am not interested in blue colored objects maybe if i am interested only in in the grayscale image i can do that and then uh, i'm causing a calling a blur function blur is nothing but it just blurs the edges helps in recognition quite heavily and then finally uh, let's just assume that uh, there's a function cdo.find contours and we pass in certain parameters uh, these parameters are very specific to our use case and then once we pass this uh, opencv takes care of finding the contours for us okay so in this case it's nothing but just get me all the images that you can see from a specific area it's pretty common place and then finally you can see that you are getting the contours okay and one of the basic use cases that you could do is writing something on a on a blank piece of paper and then showing it to the webcam and this is something what i did so this is called a digit recognizer you can see uh, that it is capturing everything within the uh, frame which is in the green color and then i have written certain digits on the paper piece of paper and then is trying to get the contours from it and then finally it's sending that uh, you know that particular image to the keras model for predictions you can check out the whole video it's on my github uh, you can check out the implementation as well now moving on uh, we talked about showing uh, showing uh, different objects to the webcam now we'll talk about how can we write to webcam so this is not essentially writing but it's just tracing out the path of an object and then once we remove that object we can say that uh, we have written something on the screen uh, and then finally we send that for predictions now let's let's look at that so the workflow is, remains the same we will just call the contour function we'll get the contours we we'll, in this case we we'll just trace out the path of the of the object uh, and then we can store these these values uh, in somewhere maybe in a queue or in a, in any data structure and then finally we can use that path uh, for um, for we can use this path for making predictions let's 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 look at that all right so pretty count is uh, we read from from the webcam uh, we convert color to hsv hsv format is pretty uh, useful when we want to talk about different gradients in the image um, and of course this definitely comes with some practice so you have to uh, practice with different uh, filters um, and then uh, it's going to be helpful uh, you know again how you have some practice all right so then we have certain other functions uh, this is a very important this is this is in range function so what i do is that i have a green colored object okay and then the green colored object will have a range in the rgb channel right so rgb channel uh, different uh, values of rgb will correspond to different color so we can safely say that you know if color lies between this range to this range it's the color green okay and then uh, what we do is that we have this in range function so get me all the green color from the entire image okay uh, and then erode dilate is mostly just getting rid of the background noise and then um, making sure that i have a smooth image and then finally a very basic concept that we are studying in mathematics as well as uh, electronics as well uh, is called as bitwise and so you just take the and of your entire image to the mask that you have created and the mask only gets the green color which means that from the entire image you would just get the color green okay and once you have that you just send send that to contours okay so basically you are just saying that you know this is my mask and based on that you fil filter out the entire webcam feed and then you give me the contours uh, based on uh, on all these parameters that i just mentioned all right so once i have that 
uh, once I have the area, right? Uh, I find out the the central point of the object of the color green, and then as you can see, I trace out the path of the entire of my object, and I append that to a queue, which is just tracing on the path of 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 my hand movement. And once I have that, um, I keep keep adding add to the queue, okay. And once the length is zero, which means that I'm not writing anymore, I will just send it for predictions, okay. So you can see that once I've written, I'm going to use uh, the the mask that I have defined earlier. I'm just going to send it to find contours. Basically, I want to get all the um, you know all the uh, areas of interest. And once I have that. I'm going to just uh, send it to a prediction. I'm just going to send it for prediction. Okay. All right. Um, and this is a very basic use case. We have we have seen that uh, in the previous example as well. This is just an extension of it. I'm just storing uh, the path of what I'm trying to write uh, in a queue, and then based on that, I'm sending that for predictions. And this is pretty commonplace. You can do something similar. So this is what I have done. Uh, this is an auto encoder for digit recognition. So basically, I have um, uh, so basically what this does is that I have three uh, different models: a simple model, a deep learning model, and a CNN model. And then I have given some memory to it, and then it's trying to predict which uh, digit is it, and then it's trying to draw the same data from its own memory. Um, and this is uh, pretty interesting because you can see that I'm able to write cleanly. Uh, on the image, uh, sorry, for using the webcam, and then based on that image, uh, my model are making predictions. Okay, uh, pretty uh, basic uh, example. Um, and of course, there are much more complicated examples that you could see if you want to work on something similar. But the whole motivation behind this session is to have these basic intuitions and use that uh, to develop an efficient model and an efficient application. All right, let's move ahead. Similarly, uh, now we have we have talked about showing different images, um, writing on the screen. Now we'll talk about different human features. Uh, so, one of the basic concepts is you know getting uh, how can we use hand gestures for uh, to get information out of it. Okay, um, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a, a emoji classification model. Okay, uh, so based on my hand different hand gestures, I want to to classify different hand gestures into different. Um, uh, emojis. Okay, so this is my this is how my data set looks like. So as you can see, my data set is only black and white images. It's not colored images. This is the data set that I created myself. Uh, and how I did that is by uh, again uh, using these basic concepts of image processing. I filtered out all the background noise and I got only black and white images. And that meant my my machine learning model could run fast. It could run um, you know without any uh, uh, lower frame rate and it could make predictions in real time. So let's see how I did that. Uh, I use some with a very basic Keras model using using and CNNs, um, and then finally these are like very basic concepts about machine learning, uh, categorical cross entropy, the laws that I use. Basically, it's saying that I want to uh, categorize my uh, emojis or hand gestures into twelve different classes, and once I have that, I'm just going to make predictions. So you can see that my accuracy is. Around uh, 97 to 98%, and I achieved it very quickly simply because I've used black and white images, and my gestures are pretty distinct. All right, so let's see how I did that. Pretty basic. Uh, again, first the first line says that I'm going to read from the webcam. Pretty commonplace. Again, I'm going to use HSV format, um, uh, and I'm going to convert my color image to HSV. And then this is an important function, so I've used an in-range function. Uh, and the, the values that you see uh, are actually of my skin color. Um, and these are static values. These are not the, the very efficient implementation as I can recall, because uh, what I would have wanted is maybe have a more uh, dynamic, uh, uh, you know, dynamic in-range function so that it can cater to multiple people. But this is um, a skin color and could, it could work with most of the people. Um, and then of course, fine name is using a bitwise and, which I have already say, said that. So based on my color of the skin, it's going to perform a bitwise and between uh, the color of my skin and the entire image. And so I'm just going to get my hand gestures from it. And then of course, I'm just using uh, some of the basic functionalities. And then finally, I'm using a fine contours function. 
which just gets me uh, my which gets me my areas of interest. And once I have that, I'm just going to get the max out of it. Max basically says that I just want to make sure that I get the most uh, defined area of uh, you know area of interest. And once I have that, I'm just going to send it for predictions. Okay, so this is the Mochinator project that I developed a couple of years back. You can see um, that it is able to very distinctly get all my hand gestures um, and then convert it to emojis. And then I'm using a simple uh, image processing concept of image overlaying. Um, uh, and then I'm overlaying it on top of my output feed. Okay, uh, you can check out the whole video. Uh, I have different implementations of it. So this is one of the implementations. Other thing that you could do is you can also use, instead of having the static gestures, you can use a dynamic uh, object detection model. So as you can see that it's going to detect my hand from the entire field. And then based on that, it, it is uh, showing me different uh, uh, emojis for my hand gestures. Similarly, you can use a similar concept to develop something pretty interesting. This is called as a rock, paper, scissors, little spark. So if you have seen Big Bang Theory, it's a, it's a game. So you must have all, all, already, already played the rock, paper, scissors. This is just an extension of it. It uh, looks pretty similar. Um, you have different gestures for, for paper, rock, scissors, and then based on that, you have different conditions for the person to win. And as you can see, um, all this, I'm using my simple hand gestures and I'm getting uh, values from it and then based on that I'm deciding whether I have one or etc or whether CPU has one uh, So this was it about uh, hand gestures now we'll talk about a different uh, human feature as well as eyes aspect ratio uh, so eye aspect ratio is important because um, it is actually how um, it's, it's I mean it can have a it can have multiple use cases so we'll just talk about that pretty quickly. One, one thing that I also want to talk about is um, is uh, using somebody else's implementation if it's already present or using a pre-trained model. So in this case, I've used a pre-trained model uh, for getting the eye aspect ratio. Uh, so I've used something called as DLIM. It's a library, a uh, pretty popular library to get different facial features. So you can just you say that, you know, using DLIM, you can get just get the frontal face uh, and then based on that, you get left eye and the right eye, and then you have a function called the eye aspect ratio, which calculates the distance uh, between the different points on the eye. So just to give you any, just to you know clear the, um, if there's any confusion, it, it just tells if your eyes are closed or not. Uh, so if your eyes are closed, the area between, in the area and close in the eye is going to be small. And then, um, uh, and then finally, it, it uses that as area to make some uh, compelling use cases. I like, again, yeah, just use simple OpenCV. Cap.read means that I'm just going to read from the webcam. Uh, and I'm using this detect uh, function, which is just using a pretend model for, from DLIM. And then based on that, I'm just getting my eye aspect ratio from the left eye and the right eye. Uh, and then uh, I'm just, and of course, as you can find contours, you can even draw contours on the image. I'm drawing contours uh, on the eyes. And then finally, what this says is that if if a flag or if is greater than some certain uh, threshold, that is my eyes are closed for a specific period of time, I can raise an alarm saying that, you know, the person is drowsy. So this is a, the use case for a drowsiness detection. And as you can see, this is uh, something that I did a couple of years back. Um, and you can see that the, the color green around my eyes, it, it's only, it's used, uh, it's basically I'm drawing contours using that pre-trained model. And I can see that my eyes are closed for a specific number of frames. And it, that there's an alert that was on the screen. Similar thing that you could use for a MOS code decoder. Um, so uh, this is only essentially for people who cannot uh, move, don't have any motor functions. So using your eye blinks and uh, eye blinks, you can use that as dots and dashes to make some prediction. So this was mostly for, let's say, if you want to say uh, different letters, um, or you want to uh, spell out different letters for communication, is going to be helpful for people uh, with disabilities. Uh, you can feel free to check out the whole implementations on my uh, on my GitHub page. Uh, we'll quickly go ahead. We'll talk about facial recognition. So facial recognition is definitely going to be 
is definitely catching uh, up um, you know given the current situation and the current state of the art technologies that are evolving all over the world facial recognition is one of the most available use cases that i could think of using machine learning and computer vision so just to give you an understanding facial recognition is nothing but um, authenticating a person uh, whether he is allowed to enter a premises or not okay and what i did was i researched i looked at a paper it was called as face nets um, and this is one of the one of the earlier papers that talked about how machine learning could be used for uh, facial recognition so we we'll look at that uh, so in this case uh, what what this model does is that it sees every face and it encodes or it gives us unique value for every face let's say uh, for example let's say i can have a unique value of 1.456 something like that uh, and then every, somebody else um, will have a different unique value because our facial features are absolutely different okay so we'll have these encodings so every face will have an encoding and this is what this function does so image to encoding just gets my model and this is a pretrained model again face net is a pretrained model that you could get of course you can train it on your own but it takes a lot of resources so it's better to just use a pretrained model once you have that you send the face uh, that you get from the webcam and you get an encoding out of it okay and then once you have the encoding you can check it against every other encoding that is authenticated to enter right so what i'm doing is i'm just going to i'm just going to go through all the databases and i'm just going to find uh the dif- dis- distance between my image from the webcam and all the images in the database okay and if it is less than a certain threshold value uh, it means that i am the same person in the database and then i have the authentication to enter something or i'm enter a, a, a work premises otherwise i am not authenticated and i cannot enter so this is something that i did um, you can see this is my brother and in the pool and he has a this he has um um you know he has volunteered for this project uh, and this is me so you can see that now i have three to four different images of myself and my brother uh, in the in the in the database and then it gets a specific encoding for a specific uh, uh face and then it tries to get the distance uh, between all the images in the database and the image from the webcam i have added one more functionality which which is basically if you are not looking at the image uh, or if you are not looking at the camera then uh, you they will not not be in detection so this is a security which is that i um, got inspired from the latest iphone at that time iphone 10 which had the facial unlock uh, so yeah so now we have looked at hand gestures i looked at eye aspect ratio i looked at facial recognition we have also looked at uh, like writing through webcam doing content through webcam now i want to talk about something that i am currently working on it's called as islar inner language recognition uh, so let's talk about that so the project the aim of the project is to develop and standardize uh, a recognition system for indian sign languages okay so this is what i did uh, i was not working on the all the images or all, all the colored images i am was only i filtered out just my facial features because as you can see that i can filter out my facial features i can filter out my hand gestures i use that filter technique again uh, to create a database for sign language interpretation okay so you can see that so we have different gestures for different letters and different alphabets and different uh, other static gestures uh, but the main thing is that it is very fast so i don't need to de- don't don't need to depend on the internet or fast processors i can use this lightweight model to run efficiently and quickly and get the results um, uh, you know in real time so this is the implementation that you could see as you can see that i have a lot of background noise but i'm able to filter out just my facial features and my hand gestures and i'm based on that i'm making uh these predictions you can see that on the left uh, hand side downwards you can see that i'm for every gesture i'm predicting uh, what i'm trying to say using the sign language all right uh, you can check out the whole uh, video it's on youtube you can also check out a blog uh, check, check out a blog that i have written for the same um, so we can talk about that let's move forward uh, we can discuss that later on yeah. uh, so we have talked about 
sign language as well. Uh, so we are, we have not talked about hand gestures, facial features, uh, facial recognition as well, sign language. Now we'll talk about the whole pose. So what if I wanted to work on the entire pose of, of a human and not just only these features? I came up across this very uh, interesting uh, open source project called as Open Post, uh, which is open sourced by CMU. Uh, you can definitely check it out. Uh, this is one of the uh, you know, a, a demo that the, the college themselves showed. And as you can see that the, the researcher, um, we can clearly see uh, his facial features as well. So you can see that I have these uh, lines across the jaws. And then of course I have a, 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 a kind of a frame of that person. Uh, and this is pretty useful uh, when we're talking about, uh, or when we're trying to work with open with different poses and not just a very specific feature right you can check out the whole video it's pretty interesting you can check out the research paper as well their implementation is pretty interesting as well although it's very heavy uh, but then it definitely solves a lot of use cases and i did the same on emerginator um, as you can see i had this open pose again uh, since i'm sitting very close to the monitor it's not able to detect the entire pose but it's able to detect my it's able to detect my facial features. It's able to detect my shoulders, my hands, and then it's 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 making uh, predictions based on that. So pretty pretty interesting project, I'll say. Uh, and we are we are working with all the uh, other all the features, including um, you know the different poses, different postures, and so it's, it's, it will definitely have a lot of use cases going forward. Hmm. All right, so this was it. Uh, I had a lot of fun giving my uh, intuition to you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can do that on my uh, email or on my uh, uh, GitHub page or on my personal website. If you have any feedbacks for me, if you feel that I am lacking somewhere, feel free to reach out to me on my website. The link is down below. Um, and I'll be more than happy to address those comments and get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, so this is me, Akshay Bahadur. Uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter, Akshay Bahadur 3. You can reach out to me on my personal website, akshaybahadur.com. And if you want to have a look at the resources uh, and all the references for this talk, uh, feel free to go to bit.ly slash isods-20 and you will re redirect it to my GitHub page, which will contain all the resources um, for this particular talk. I hope you guys had fun. I had a lot of uh, fun time discussing about computer vision and machine learning. If you guys have any other questions, please do reach out. And I just want to thank you guys again for listening to me. And hopefully I'll, I'll see you guys soon.